Okay, uh, we'll turn it back to Nigeria, where Africa's largest economy and the most populous country is yet to find a lasting solution for a sustainable mass housing for its 200 million citizens. Discussing this vex issue with me here now is a former banker and two ton real estate entrepreneur and chief executive officer of Realty Point Nigeria, Debo Adijana. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moffat. Where are we on? Uh, mass housing, is that still a reality? It looks like a lot of folks don't really care about that. Is there a new <laughs> approach to this very elusive economic challenge? Yeah, I would say that um, there has been some interesting development in recent times. Um, when I first uh, came into the development space about 17 years ago, when you talk about mass housing, you're only talk about, talking about ownership. But uh, recent development in the space and discussions around solutions have started uh, including rental and social housing. You know, so in that perspective, we would say that we are making progress. And Nigerians want to own a house. You know yeah. that. Yes, but everybody can. It's a social cultural thing. Sentiment. Yeah, it is. Yes. It is. Everybody can't. However, everybody should be housed. So I think the fundamental mm. solution should be oh, that. So that's a bit different. It's mass between, housing. Yes, mass housing, Do, not it doesn't mass, mean mass ownership. ownership. <laughs> exactly. But when we say mass housing, uh, what goes in the head of the average man on the street is that this is my house. Maybe the average man that you are talking about. <laughs> but yes. I tell you, the real average man there just wants a roof over his head. If he can own it better, but worst case situation, he should be able to afford the roof over his head, even if it comes oh, to social big, housing. Yeah, so what's the biggest challenge in real estate here, what you talk about? Yeah, social housing. Define that for me. So social housing is when uh, the government, of course, participates in housing provision in a subsidized manner. Participate? Okay. Yes, in Not housing lead. provision. Of course, must be the leader. But what I mean is provide the enabling environment. So in that sense, leading, of yeah, course. Okay. So participate by providing the enabling environment in housing provision for those that cannot afford to even rent at the normal rate. So it could be providing it for them for a specific time, you know, on rental basis or even on ownership maybe for a, a longer period. So that's, that's social housing. Do, do we need to have a long-term view of housing, mass housing in Nigeria, a short-term view? Do you think that's a major problem? I think that is, that is really where the problem is. Um, a lot of times when we talk about housing provision before now, it's just a short-term view. But I believe that with recent development in the space, uh, the Family Homes Fund, for example, coming on board and a few other things that have happened in recent time, that has been addressed significantly. For example, for the Family Homes Fund, if I'm not mistaken, they have like uh, in their pipeline for 2022, over 100 housing units that they want to provide. No, 300 housing units that they want to provide. You know, and in their existence, they've done a couple of thousands, you know, that have already been delivered, 5,000 actually, and 9,000 in the pipeline already, you know, that will be delivered uh, this year. So we can see that there is some progress, you know, in that space. Uh, Federal Mortgage Bank is also, in a way, recently has been performing uh, at least better than we used to have it. And that has also increased confidence in that uh, uh, institution of government. And people are participating more now. The cost of a house yeah. and, and rent is, okay. is so high. There's inflation, there's exchange rate. Yes, so there are the basic challenge with housing in, in the, or for the market really right now is on the demand side, there is this inflationary trend that we are witnessing is is eroding purchasing power, you know, so you, you really cannot uh, do much about that. Then on the supply side, for the suppliers is also a challenge because there is this volatility of pricing materials, you know, which is majorly basis of exchange rates, you know. And so take, for example, the energy sector, diesel is gone bunkers mm. and that has its impact on the supply side so the supply is also affected uh, how are you real estate developers coping okay well so coping is the word <laughs> yeah coping is the word so uh, a few things for example for developers that have really studied the environment right now uh, a lot aren't selling off-plan project anymore uh, at the moment, because a lot of the ones that people have sold in the past, in the last two years, they are finding it difficult to now deliver because prices have moved, 
against what they sold. And in cases, and that is, so that is, that has started affecting trust issues, you know, integrity issues in the market. And because of that happening also, the, even the ones that maybe eventually delivered, you know, uh, buyers are finding quality issues with what has been delivered. And that is really, really impacting. So for a lot of developers right now, we're trying to stop selling off plan and then you develop and until you know your pricing before you sell. And a lot are also avoiding the finishing materials, the finishing end of it. So you've seen a lot of car cars or advanced shell being delivered right now because it is in those finishing components that a lot of these FX fluctuations come in and all of that. So, so when we started mortgage banking uh, idea many years ago by the central banks, and all what of that, and, and we all thought it was going to work. But, but what's the problem here? Are mortgage banks still able to provide mass housing support, funding support? Mm -hmm. Mass housing is a challenge for mortgage banks, um, mm -hmm. and largely because of the kind of funding structure. So uh, the, uh, we, we wouldn't say that, I wouldn't really sit down here and say that our mortgage banks are adequately funded to be able to meet the demands of that market. So uh, investments in mortgage banking needs to be much more than it is right now, you know. And um, that said, we also need to look at how we can improve on the kind of uh, um, funding, patient capital that we are injecting or bringing in into the system. That's what I was trying to ask my, my final point about what alternative funding options do we have? So um, for example, I think there are two approaches to the issue of funding. I think particularly uh, the CBN has been advocating for uh, the mortgage uh, guarantee companies, you know. That would help in assuring and enabling more people qualify for mortgage. And then also the mortgage bankers in de-risking mortgages, you know, that would help. Then that aside, we should also open up, you know, there's been a lot of talk with the pension fund and all of that. We need to really look at those low cost funds, you know, and have a way, work around the system by which the mortgage sector, the construction sector can assess those funds, you know, and uh, that will bring in the pricing. You guys got your eyes on that 14 trillion naira. I know that. There's money sitting there. You guys can't keep your, get your eyes off that money. I'm not I understand. sitting there and it should be used for a good cause. I understand. Yeah. I understand. It's, it's patient capital. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Many thanks for coming and do have a great weekend. Uh, Debo Adijana, real estate entrepreneur okay. and CEO at Realty Point Nigeria.